Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota, produced by Lakeland PBS with host Bethany Wesley. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service, tax preparation for businesses and individuals, online at niswatax.com. Hello, I'm Bethany Wesley, and this is Lakeland Currents. The Beltrami County Historical Society was founded in 1952, initially located near Paul and Babe at the Lake Bemidji waterfront. Today, the Historical Society operates the Beltrami County History Center in the James J. Hill Railroad Depot in downtown Bemidji. Here, visitors tour exhibits, conduct research, browse the gift shop, and ultimately learn more about the land and resources in Beltrami County, including, of course, its people. Last year, the Historical Society hired Gary Rosman as its newest executive director. Today, I welcome Gary to the table along with Sherry Geisen, I'm sorry, along with Sharon Geisen, president of the Historical Society Board of Directors, to discuss some of the happenings, opportunities, and challenges at the History Center. Welcome. Hi, Sharon. Sorry no, about that. No, that's okay. <laughs> as we get started, let's talk a little bit about what your role and how long you've kind of been active with the Historical Society. So, Sharon, you predate Gary, so let's start with you. How did you first get involved? I joined the board of directors, and I've been on the board now for 12 years um, and enjoy it. I mean, I love history, so it's a passion with me, so it's a good way to preserve history and enjoy it along the way. <laughs> Is that what intrigued you about the position, was the connection with the history? Yes. Okay. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Gary, when did you join? When did you come to Bemidji? I came to Bemidji in the summer of 2016, so going on two years now. I took a leave of absence from my work with the City of New York, where in part I taught the history of the parks, Central Park and some of the other parks uh, in the five boroughs. And I was very fortunate to find a role here in Bemidji that sort of um, piqued my interest and I, I felt tapped into my talents. I had become aware of the Historical Society actually through my involvement with the community theater. Okay. I volunteered for our History Mystery and this is an annual fundraiser uh, that has become very popular in recent years. I portrayed a historical person from Bemidji's, from Bill Trammy County's past and through that means found out that my predecessor, Dan Carolus, was moving on to greener pastures and, well, the rest, as they say in my field, is history. <laughs> so Sharon, you've had different executive directors over the years. How much does an executive director kind of influence the operation or the feel of the History Center? Does that make sense? Does everybody kind of bring their own spin to it? They, they do. They do. Um, you know, some are a little more introvert than others, but they still have their their field of expertise um, to get us into the 21st century, especially into the media. You know, um, our um, web page, Twitter. What are some of the other ones? Uh, Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> All your online, right? Your right. Personas, yeah. To get us out there, and that's really in stirred up the interest. You know, and. Um, before Dan was Nicole, she was the one that created the current display that we have on now, okay. Trails Through Time. But it was de developed so that we could change out um, certain Different. sections okay. of it. Um, Gary is, well, I guess you could say he's an extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's, he's really um, viewed more around the city, you know, and more visible, and that's been a real asset for us. So to, to get, let the public know more about us. And As we kind of start talking about what the History Center is, I kind of want to talk a little bit about what the Historical Society is, because a lot of those, a lot of times those are used interchangeably and they're really kind of distinct. So how do you, what is the difference between the Historical Society and the History Center? The Historical Society is the organization the, the board of directors that runs runs it. Um, we hire an executive director to do the day-to-day. -day. Um, the board only meets once a month and approves the bills and 
um, we talk about fundraising, it's a, it's a working board. It is not a board that just meets and goes away and doesn't meet again. It's very, very much a working board. So when we have a fundraiser or an activity, board members are there. They're either handing out cookies or pouring coffee or working in the gift shop. It's a hands-on board because we only have one paid staff. I'll add to that that the Historical Society is also comprised of our uh, dedicated volunteers yes. and the membership. And truly, they are the lifeblood of the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. What we do um, is really for them. Otherwise, we'd have no real reason to exist. What we're trying to do is preserve history so that uh, the residents of Beltrami County and the surrounding areas have some connection to the past, to their past. The um, History Center itself uh, currently is uh, one in the same with the Great Northern Depot, one of the uh, railroad stations that served freight and passenger traffic in Bemidji back in the um, early part of the 20th century and in, in, throughout much, much of the 20th century, actually. But before we moved in in uh, 01 uh, of this century, uh, around the turn of the millennium, um, there was there really wasn't a history center per se. Um, at one point or another in the historical society's past, we worked out of a facility at the fairgrounds, um, but those were those were intermittent. For um, Sharon, if you maybe can correct me, for a long time, our mm -hmm. collection, our, our items, our historical photographs, and other relics and antiques were stored, right. uh, but unable to be um, exhibited and displayed. Okay. Mm -hmm. How key is it to keep those open to the public so people can see them, right? What good does it do if you store things and people can't see them? Uh, well, very true, very true. But we are limited in our space, too. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a hard mm -hmm. hard decision. It's, you know, what do you pull yeah, out? It's a challenge. Uh, we like to, looking at some themes, you know, try to have some themes. Like World War One. now, we could bring out some things for World War One, and Okay, so you wait till you kind of have a collection of things to kind of link together? We do, we do. Okay. Um, we are a non-for-profit. We don't have the resources and funds to go out and acquire items to, um, to put on display. Most of our shows, our exhibits, and, and uh, other shows are um, are comprised of the materials that have been generously donated by residents and uh, and uh, uh, we have to try to see what the common thread is in in a, a, a group of items in a, in a given number of, uh, of uh, historic pieces and see what what narrative what story we can we can weave out of them but yeah it is it is a challenge our building mm -hmm. of course is not a museum it's a it's a railroad station it was not meant for displays and 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 uh, exhibits and and uh, you know model railroad sets and mannequins in historic attire. So uh, we actually had to put in a second floor into the depot. That was part of its uh, remodel uh, to house all of the items that we had accumulated over the past uh, uh, half century. Okay. So talk to me about the exhibits. Like how many exhibits do you typically have at once? Are they pretty static? How often are they changed? I would say there's a triple focus to okay. the work that we do, that we put on display. Ojibwe language and culture, railroad technology, and then the evolution of Beltrami County, the okay. past, the past 150 plus years now. Okay. Those are part of our permanent display called Trails Through Time, those three facets. But we are always trying to change things up uh, to provide for our guests a little bit of variety. We're lucky in that Bemidji caters to um, the tourism population and over the summer we do experience an increase in our visitorship and frequently these are folks who have not been to the museum yet and so for them everything is new. But we also don't want to discount the, again, like I mentioned, the lifeblood of our museum are the folks that do reside here and it is for their sake that we're always trying to program in, a, in, in an innovative way uh, by putting on the World War I Centennial display, for example, as Sharon mentioned. We're working with BSU to help tell the story of the college's founding and subsequent 100 years. Uh, they are celebrating their, their centennial. Actually, April of uh, this year marks uh, the 100 years, 100 years since groundbreaking, and uh, next year will be the 100th anniversary of the first class at what was then called the Normal School. So that's something that would be developed into an exhibit of some kind for the History Center? Abs absolutely, okay. yeah. But you do it in partnership with BSU? 
everything that we do is in partnership with other entities. We simply can't do what we do alone, and I think that's one of the benefits to having the historical society in Beltrami County is that we are able to forge these connections and to widen the circle, bring other folks, organizations, entities in and work together because I think that holistic approach helps to uh, cement the importance and the significance of, of what we're doing. And I think uh, by having other people's views and perspectives um, employed, we, um, we're able to tell a much more comprehensive uh, uh, story of the past. Okay. So with this BSU display then, or this BSU project that you've undertaken, how much of it is collaborative? How much do you direct in terms of what you want versus what BSU's message wants to be? Do you know what I'm saying? How do you, how do you um, juggle that? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just in the beginning stages right now. Okay. Uh, we're working with um, their photo archivist. We're working with the history department with, uh, with at BSU and also with their recently appointed um, librarian. Uh, and so we're 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 at the stage where we're deliberating the best way to shine a light and showcase uh, that that particular story. What we're trying to do is see if we want to maybe focus on different eras. This was BSU in the. 30s and in the 50s and so on and so forth, or whether we want to highlight famous alums, or um, or maybe maybe dr try to connect the college with other aspects of American history, how how the students and faculty responded to Vietnam, for example. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we hope to participate in a year-long series of events that the college is hosting and also have an exhibit um, at the History Center that uh, hopefully will, uh, will, um, will dovetail with what they're doing and be part and parcel with that, with that celebration. So do all your exhibits then come locally? Are they all developed locally? Do you get them from other cities that come past through? Do you have partnerships? That's a, that's a good question. One of our other key partners is the Minnesota State Historical Society. Okay. Um, they are, they are a, a, a wonderful group of people. They're a strong presence in the state. We're lucky to be in a state where actually, uh, I'm going to try to get this right, every single one of our counties has a historical society and I think that says a lot about Minnesota as a state and the importance that we place on the, the, the connection with our forebears. The Minnesota Historical Society does consult with us. We had uh, the honor not too long ago, just mm -hmm. uh, this past January. winter, hope, uh, hosting a traveling exhibit on the fur trade. Uh, that they curated and developed, and that is making its way around uh, museums uh, throughout greater Minnesota. Okay. So, Sherry, I wanted to ask you how you've seen in your involvement from the Board of Directors side, um, how, how have exhibits changed? We know, like, for example, Trails Through Time is a little bit more interactive than probably I would guess they had years ago, right? You have touch screens and you have mm -hmm. technology. Is it important to kind of include those kind of modern touches when you develop these exhibits? You know, I believe it does. Um, to get the customer that's coming in to look, you know, to be to able to touch and feel and pull them, pull them in, you know, and some of those electronics that we have now today really do. And a good example was the fur trade one. Okay. where they could push a button and they'd watch a screen and it was spoken in Ojibwe and then you had the choice, what did they say, you know, A, B, or C. So it makes you listen and learn and yes, it helps to have all that hands-on interaction if you can correlate it with the exhibit that you're doing. Try to appeal to more than just one sense, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that tactile sensation mm -hmm. is... Uh, 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 Truly, a way that uh, one of the one of the ways that people do learn, uh, and like you said, it's it's a, a multi-sensory approach. Um, if we can figure out how to do it, we will. Mm -hmm. um, I want to move to some of the events um, because it's not just the exhibits, right? You want people to keep coming back more and more and more. And we talked a little bit about the history mystery mm -hmm. early on. This is right. It's by far your most popular event. Would you say? Am I, am I accurate? The Pretty history close? mystery. Yes. Yes, very much uh, a family event that is really caught on and yes. It, it's yes. based on um, the board game Clue. So okay. instead of a mansion, we have the depot itself. And what we do is every year we identify uh, four or five individuals from Bemidji's past, from Beltrami County's past, uh, from all walks of life. And we engage local 
actors uh, to portray them. So we'll do the research, our volunteers help uh, in that effort. Okay. We'll give the information to these performers and then uh, and outfit them appropriately for the era and the time period in question. They then are suspects in a fictional crime, uh, but the participants have to figure out through a series of uh, uh, clues that they unearth and so on and so forth who the culprit is. Of course, no crime actually happens, but it's a really fun way to engage everybody that comes. It's an, it's an opportunity to engage in uh, uh, participatory programming. So it's not passive. You're actually doing something. You're playing a part. And it allows you to learn a little bit and also have fun at the same time. Uh, this book is something that we want to um, that we want to print uh, some more copies of and uh, offer in our uh, museum store. Uh, but it's uh, sort of a little photo essay about the last uh, three or four years, okay. uh, produced uh, uh, generously for us by one of our um, great volunteers, Cecilia McKeague. And uh, so uh, we're, 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 we're excited to create uh, uh, future volumes as uh, we put on the history <laughs> as of As it history keeps again. expanding, Exa right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. But these events, right, what do they do? What is the philosophy behind them? Because it brings in people, right, which is obviously key, but it brings in maybe perhaps, correct me if I'm wrong, different demographics of people than maybe perhaps would visit. And different ages. Okay. And different ages. Um, because this one is really family orientated. So, so you've got the children coming in too and learning and listening to the suspects, you know, as they tell you a little bit about their life. So, yeah, when we can appeal to a wide range I think you hit the nail on the head. We are looking to diversify our audience and folks that may not think to spend a Saturday afternoon, let's say, at a history museum, perhaps for them it, it would be appealing to come to, let's say, um, well, a poetry lecture, which we had and which we're hoping to have um, again, April of National Poetry Appreciation Month. So we focused on historical poetry, so there is that connection uh, to history, but it may not be something that has ever been held at the center before. Uh, we, uh, we did a meditation at the museum, for example. That's another uh, strategy that we employed, something that's a little bit out of the box. Okay. In other words, what our main asset is, is the building itself. It's a historic structure. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, gorgeous architecture, well-preserved. It can do more than tell the story of the past. That can be employed as a, as a community center, as a resource for Bemidji as a whole. And one of the things about museums is that they're sedate, they're quiet, and we thought, what with mindfulness and meditation being so popular these days, let's see if we can combine those two. And so one day um, earlier this year, we, uh, we uh, opened up early, um, uh, had some light music going. I, I, I thought it was a very successful event, and we hope to have m m more of the same. And we're always looking for other ideas, um, for undertakings that, um, that uh, we may not have thought of yet. Okay. So, we're so if open I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying you're looking to potentially have more events, more people come through mm -hmm. that don't always necessarily have a very obvious connection to history, right? You want them to come in and kind of use the building, keep the building functional, and then, it, you know, open it up to what they could experience beyond. Ab absolutely. Once they're in, they're aware of the historical society. We're kind of a bit off the beaten path. We're at the end of uh, Minnesota Avenue, number 130, in the what, what's known as the rail corridor. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, it was a, a bit more central and, and, <laughs> and bustling. Of course, we don't service uh, uh, train passengers anymore. Uh, but yeah, any way that we can attract attention um, uh, to, to what we do, I'm all, I'm all for, uh, because that does then translate into a, a, a renewed interest in history. Okay. I do want to touch on also one of the other big aspects of what the History Center and Historical Society helps with, which is research opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about the type of people that come in to do research. What do you offer? What can they really access there? It runs the gamut, okay. truly. Uh, we posted school kids doing um, homework assignments and history day presentations and research papers. We have an internet connection and an Ancestry.com account for folks that are uh, keen to study up on their own genealogy. This is also something now that's becoming quite uh, popular with advances in genetic testing and so on. Uh, people are really eager to, um, 
to delve into their family's past using these technologies that, that, that make that search um, a bit more accessible to them. Um, we have, um, we have uh, decades worth of the Bemidji Pioneer on um, microfilm. Uh, we have city directories going, going back uh, to the early 1900s. We have historical photographs. Uh, people, uh, people here uh, have um, long, long histories with the past. So a lot of the times when they come, um, it's not just for... Uh, abstract scholarship, although we can uh, help with that and are happy to. They're looking for information about their, their own families, grandparents, great-grandparents, and frequently we're able to unearth these uh, uh, family histories for them. And uh, that, that's one of my favorite aspects of the job, is to be able to illuminate a, a, a thread of somebody's um, unique family story and saga that, that's, that, I think that, that's very special. But um, it goes beyond the local. We recently were able to assist with a cemetery, I believe it was in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. Uh, mm -hmm. They had, um, they had uh, service members buried there um, from uh, the wars that America was involved in and have been now trying to post photographs of these service members and reached out to us about two particular individuals that uh, they were able to deduce originally were from Beltrami County. Wow. And we, with the help of some of our members, we put the word out, we're looking for such and such individuals, and if you have any photos, please contact us. And lo and behold, uh, yeah. we, they did, and we sent it to them. They were so grateful, and this is uh, something that we can point to as, a, as an instance of uh, the practical application of, of our work and what we do. And what was so unique about this is that the community where these grave sites are, each family has adopted a grave. Oh, wow. And they, they from generation to the next generation, they take care of that one particular grave. Oh, wow. Year so it's after never year. neglected or right. forgotten. So it is never neglected. Oh, wow. I just thought that was amazing. That's just one of those things they just call out of the blue and they just say, can you help us with this? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's one of the it's one of the perks of being the historical oh. society for uh, for the county. Uh, there's never a dull day. We get we get all oh, such interesting requests and such interesting donations. Again, un unsolicited. We had a quilt come in, over a hundred year old quilt um, from um, the Solway part of uh, of the state, and uh, this was embroidered with gosh, I'd say over a hundred uh, mm -hmm. different names. And so oh. we're undertaking a project. Uh, to transcribe each of those names, uh, I call it sort of the, the Rosetta Stone of local history. Um, it's really unearthed for us a, tr a treasure trove of, uh, of uh, uh, f future academic opportunities for us to, to delve into. <laughs> Um, we have just a few minutes left here, but I do want to have a chance to highlight one of the projects you've kind of taken up, um, because I believe you have your own personal interest in this. But Beltrami County does not have an official flag, correct? <laughs> That is correct. How did you come to learn that? It was June 14th of last year, which happens to be Flag Day. I think a uh, most underrated holiday <laughs> and civic observance here. And uh, I thought um, I had just been on duty for a few months at the Historical Society. And as Sharon mentioned, we do have a, a media presence, thanks to my predecessor. And I wanted to uh, post a photo of the Beltrami County flag. I thought it was incumbent upon us as the Historical Society for the <laughs> county to, to uh, celebrate the occasion uh, in that way. We didn't have one, I came to realize. Uh, it is not essential, apparently. Some counties simply don't. Okay. But I started to do a little bit of digging, and it, I, I realized that municipalities that do, for those locations, cities, counties, for example, the city of Chicago has a great-looking flag, and it has become a point of pride for the, for the citizens. I wanted to do something like that for Beltrami County. Okay. Uh, I know we have a diverse population. Um, uh, I, I, I am neither uh, uh, Native American or Norwegian. I'm a New Yorker. Uh, but I wanted something that everyone could rally behind, no matter your um, uh, 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 particular heritage or, or, or backstory or where you came from. I wanted to do something that uh, really symbolized the uh, unique past that we all share as Beltrami County residents. And so I engaged uh, the services of a local designer. Um, 
and uh, put together a few options, presented to them, presented them to the uh, board of commissioners, and well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed to uh, uh, <laughs> see uh, what what comes of this. I have a, a an image of uh, one such design that I'll show you, okay. and. Uh, I try to incorporate the colors of the um, Italian flag because our namesake, uh, Giacomo Beltrami, was of course an Italian explorer, uh, and uh, I wanted to I wanted to incorporate some of uh, some of that 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 part of the story. So, how is that process working? Like, if somebody watching has an interest, like, wow, I would really like to hear more about this or get involved, just contact. Do you? Is, is it still ongoing? It's, it's still ongoing. Um, the county commissioners uh, uh, obviously have pressing matters uh, that demand their attention, and I don't want to detract from their important sure. um, work, but anybody who has an interest in this could, uh, well, there are a number of ways. They could write a letter to the editor, to the pioneer. They could appear at a county, board, a county uh, commissioner's uh, meeting. Those are held monthly and open to the public. But yeah, they can also feel very free to contact us. We're at the depot at Beltrami County, at BeltramiHistory.org, forgive me, mm -hmm. uh, or just stop on by with uh, their, their thoughts uh, on the topic. Uh, my goal is to actually bring the completed flag to Bergamo, Italy, the birthplace of the Giacomo oh, Beltrami when I visit um, later this year. I plan to travel in the fall to see a museum there where some uh, Native American artifacts from Beltrami's travels through this part of the world are actually housed. Oh, wow, that's yeah. fascinating. Well, we can't wait to follow along with your journey and see what happens with the flag. Thank you, thank um, you. I'm excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you guys for joining me today and for talking both about the Historical Society and also yeah. the History Center. Um, thank you for tuning in tonight. If you would like to learn more about either Historical Society or History Center, um, the website here is on the bottom of the screen. Also, they have active Facebook and Twitter accounts, so you can certainly find them online. Thank you for joining me tonight. Please join me next time.